acorn growers are experienced in managing fungal diseases. Every year, diseases like gray leaf spot, northern corn leaf blight, common rust, and some places southern rust, we get those infections in our corn. Luckily, our, our, our corn breeders have been able to build in some resistance to our hybrids, and even if we do get some infections that come through that, we're able to treat those infections with a timely fungicide application. But in the last few years, the U.S. has experienced a new fungal disease in our corn. It's called tar spot, and it's changing the way we manage our corn. Tar spot was first found in Mexico in 1904, and it's pretty much been a disease in that Central America area up until about 2015 when it was first found here in the United States in Illinois and Indiana. Of course, since then, it's, it's spread uh, throughout uh, mostly the eastern part of the Corn Belt, but it's starting to move west as well. Not really sure how it came to the United States, but we know that tar spot can overwinter on, you know, last year's corn stover and residue, so maybe it came up uh, from from South America that way. Either way, it's, it's here now. Right now, we, we think corn is the only host, but there could be other species that are, are harboring this disease as well. Now, tar spot by itself is, is not generally that much of a yield limiting disease, but when we put another disease with it, uh, I've seen northern corn leaf blight and tar spot uh, be very detrimental to corn. It causes it to, to die early. We can have some serious harvest issues, lodging and what have not. This year what's new is that I've seen tar spot plus crown rot or anthracnose, which were more of a seedling disease starting to show up now. And boy, it's doing the same thing. We're seeing poor stock quality. The corn's moved along faster than it should. There's definitely gonna be some serious yield loss there. And of course, some harvestability issues. When we first identified tar spot, especially in the initial infections, which this year took place end of June, we're not gonna find a lot of lesions. We're gonna find one here or there. Yeah, and that's, that's the start of our, our infections. We're looking for small, round sized lesions. They're gonna be raised. They could be a, a brownish color. They could be that dark tar. A lot of times they're gonna be brown first and then become darker and larger as the infection takes place. And again, that's gonna start off as one or two lesions. Those are called the stromata. Later on, we're gonna see lots and lots of those lesions as the disease progresses through the plant. Again, they're gonna get larger for some of that older infection. We may even see some that look like a fish eye where we see necrotic tissue around that initial tar spot black lesion. A lot of times, the first time a grower will experience tar spot, it's usually gonna be at harvest or right after the, the plant's senesce. That first initial infection, if it's new to your area, that seems like it's when it shows up. Now, unfortunately, that's when you have the inoculant, which is gonna overwinter in that year's residue. So obviously fields that are gonna be corn on corn or corn the next year, you're gonna have the highest chance for that disease to get started. Now, what's our optimal conditions for tar spot to develop in? We're looking at temperatures around 60 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. We're looking for seven plus hours of, of leaf moisture, either from dew or periodic rainfall. We're looking for high relative humidity. Now I know I just said those conditions, but I've also personally seen tar spot continue its infection in the lack of cooler temperatures, so warmer temperatures, but the common theme is that higher humidity, that higher dew point seems to keep the, the disease progressing, might slow down a little bit with warmer temperatures, but it doesn't really go away. Like I mentioned earlier, those lower leaves is where that infection is going to start taking place. And then as the lesions are produced, those will release spores, which then keep on moving up the plant as we have wind and rain events and what have not. Just like our other fungal diseases. There's a lot of similarities there. So what's the economic impact of a tar spot infection? Well, if it's just tar spot by itself, a lot of the data that we have, we can see a 10 to 20 bushel yield loss. Uh, if we have infection that takes place at tassel or before tassel, that's significant enough, especially with today's prices. The application of Veltima before infection is gonna help protect that yield potential. But if left untreated, what happens to the plant? Well, in those spots, we lose that photosynthetic capacity, which is needed, obviously, for photosynthesis to occur. And if that's not happening, we're not pumping yield into that ear to finish it off. 
if it's bad enough, especially if we get another disease interacting with tar spot, which is what's called that tar spot complex, okay, that's where serious yield impact can, can happen. And I've seen 50, 75, even 100 bushel yield losses when we have season-long competition of tar spot and northern corn leaf blight. Or in this year, something I've never seen before, we've got crown rot, which is an infection that took place in the corn back when it was little, just a few inches tall, and tar spot coming in early before tassel. The two of those together, that's leaving a significant impact. Those plants died prematurely. Their stalks are pretty much rotten and gone. It's gonna cause a lot of delays and in, in harvest issues for the growers. We're gonna try to prevent that from happening. So that, that application of Veltima is helping to protect that plant. 